brother! Ben Incredibles 2 is finally out, which means we can finally examine it closer and get to the bottom of some of our burning questions. Like, what happened to the Underminer? Did he just get away? How many powers does Jack-Jack actually have? But perhaps most important of all, are the Incredibles living in Syndrome's house? <laughs> As for our last meetup, we all saw The Incredibles 2 together and we had so much fun we decided to do it again. This time we are going to Orlando, Florida on December 1st and we are seeing Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Come watch the movie with us and then meet up with Ben and I afterwards. Tickets are on sale now, link is in the description. But anyway, back to The Incredibles 2. Ba-dum bum ba -dum. Feels so good to have that stuck in my head again. Now guys, if I had one complaint about Incredibles 2, it is simply that Syndrome wasn't in it. Oh, this is just too good. No, it's not good. I mean, personally, I could think of at least five ways it could have still been alive. He could have protected himself with zero point energy and hid in the smoke of the explosion. That could have been a robot that we see died. He could have uploaded his consciousness into a machine. There could have been time travel involved, or he could have even just made a Horcrux, which admittedly is from the wrong fandom. Actually on that note, a lot of people have speculated that the Pars moved into Batman's house, or maybe even more specifically, Bruce Wayne's house. Which might sound ridiculous because Incredibles is a Pixar franchise and Pixar is owned by Disney and Disney owns Marvel, so why would they do a DC thing? But Bruce Wayne was an eccentric millionaire and he did own a house with a bunch of different exits. And DevTech does sort of resemble Wayne Enterprises, and if you screw up your eyes really hard right here, the clouds sort of look like a bat symbol? And the phone in the Devers' parents' house is totally a nod to the bat phone. <gasps> Was Winston Devers' father Batman? Wait, no, why would he need lines to other supers then? <gasps> in case they needed his help. But yeah, probably not, because then why couldn't he just defend himself from the intruders? So yeah, no, wait, what was I talking about? Right, Syndrome. The zero point is, I'm starting to see why they decided to keep him dead, because all of the ways they could have kept him alive are just horrible ideas, and at least one of them is not even in this universe. But if I have a second complaint about this movie, it's not even about the movie itself, it's just about the Municipal City, or I'm sorry, all county school system. I mean, school on Saturdays? You kidding me, guys? And how do we know they have school on Saturday? <laughs> Glad you asked. Look, see, here we see Tony ask out Violet for Friday night. So, Friday? Friday. Then, 14 years later, it's finally Friday, and Mr. Incredible even reconfirms the night right here. Well, you also wiped out the Friday night date my daughter had with him. Then the date comes and goes, Violet gets stood up, she cries about it, has some ice cream, goes invisible, and then next morning, boom. At school. For shame, all county school system. For shame. But anyway, back to Syndrome, because as it turns out, it's possible he wasn't as absent from the movie as we initially thought. Not physically in the Pars house like he was in the first one, or like Screenslaver is physically right here. Oh my god, it's so creepy. But that the house itself may have belonged to Syndrome before the Pars moved in. We are first introduced to the house while Elastigirl and Winston are on the phone, and it immediately makes quite an impression. Certainly much more so than the house they were living in in the first movie anyway. This is because each house is actually meant to represent the family's current trajectory. In Incredibles 1, they've been retired for 15 years, they've moved around a bunch, Bob is in an actual depression, and as such, the house itself is literally slumped in. Seriously, who designs a house this way? And even more importantly, who buys a house that looks like this? On the other hand, their new house is big and shiny and purposefully angled up, pointing to the direction them and the Devers have for the new future of the Supers. And not only that... It's got a big yard! Wait, yeah, it does have a big yard. It's a yeah, yes, sure, that is very cool. I like the woods too. It's a pool! Wait, seriously, a pool? Hold on, let me get my shower shorts. Yeah, it's a pretty cool house, but what I'm really trying to get out is what Bob tells us about it when they first enter it. Dever bought it from an eccentric billionaire who liked to come and go without being seen, so the house has multiple hidden exits. Now, how Bob learned all of this about the house when a minute ago in the car they didn't even know anything about it is a mystery to me, but whatever, I'm just gonna roll with it. Although actually in that car ride, we also learned that Winston is the current owner of the house and it's one of several that he owns. My question is though, 
why do we care or even need to know that Winston bought the house from an eccentric billionaire who likes to come and go being unseen and has lots of hidden exits? It almost seems a little too convenient, like there just happens to be a house built for supers right on the outskirts of town? You might think they include that line for that exact reason, to just help explain why there happens to be a house that has a secret cave exit for Elastigirl. Or maybe they were using that to set up a sneaky escape for the kids later when they're fighting the wannabe super. Which I agree would have been cool, but instead they summon a car from miles away that hasn't been driven in 15 years with a remote that apparently has never ending batteries. Anyway, my point is that when we are introduced to Winston Dever, it is already as an eccentric billionaire who is obsessed with supers, as was his father, and his mission is to bring them back. I love superheroes! And as such, it is already believable that this house exists for this purpose. Or maybe his dad had it built, doesn't matter. The point is, you don't need to explain away why the house has hidden exits or anything like that. You already have a character who believably would have had the house. We don't need to know that he bought it from some other eccentric billionaire. Unless, that is, you were trying to tie the house into the previous movie in a very subtle way. Because seriously, why tell us about this eccentric billionaire if we're not gonna be able to figure out who it is? And honestly, List of candidates isn't that long. Seriously, how many super rich characters are there even in the Incredibles franchise? First, you have Winston, who obviously didn't buy the house from himself. Then you have his sister, Evelyn, and it wouldn't make sense for him to just buy it from her. You have their father, who they inherited all their money from, and obviously he wouldn't need to buy it from him. Also, he's dead. And then fourth, you have Sindhu. How do you think I got rich? I invented weapons. So really, it's just a classic case of process of elimination. But it's not just that. Syndrome actually fits this in a few other ways as well. For one, his other house is an island. And while I'm sure he spends most of his time there, I'm betting he had a few other places he needed to be at at times when you're selling military grade technology to countries around the world. Next is the whole secret exits thing. I'm not sure how closely you watched the first Incredibles movie, but Syndrome is the key of secret exits and entrances. Arriving at the island, just use the Manta Jet to careen into this underwater hidden entrance. His conference room literally has a wall-sized escape door into the outside. He uses the volcano itself as an exit for his rocket. And he hides his top tier computer where he totally could have uploaded his consciousness and motives into behind a wall of lava. Like, geez, man, have you ever heard of doors? They're like these things you, you know, walk through. Not unlike this one over here. Quick, allow me to demonstrate. Ready? Go for your Never open the door. Actually, let's go back to that last one for a second because this parting wall of lava isn't the only time we see Syndrome use this particular effect. You can also spot it right here as the monorail travels through a splitting waterfall concealing yet another hidden entrance. And this in particular really stood out to me as I watched Incredibles 2 because it's kind of a unique effect that Syndrome uses over and over and you wouldn't really expect to just necessarily see it anywhere else. And yet, guess what the Parr's new house happens to feature? Yeah. Parting waterfalls. And it's not even just one. I mean, it happens fast, but there's another one right here concealing yet another hidden exit. Plus, we also know Syndrome was recently apprehended and his assets were frozen. Plus, you know, he died. <laughs> A Horcrux. So it would make a lot of sense for his old home to suddenly be for sale. And beyond just the parting waterfalls, there's also just the general architecture of the house versus the island and how each utilizes nature in its design. The house is built very much to work with its surroundings and even incorporate some of it into its design. From the giant rocks in the entranceway to the secret cave exit and again the parting waterfall, it's all built to work together. As all are most of the island's facilities to the island itself. Mirage says all of the food they eat on the island is grown right there on the island. We see the exhaust ports for the rockets are actually natural caves on the island. And again, the volcano itself hides the rocket and the surrounding water and waterfalls on the island conceal the base. Plus, how ironically just is it that of all people, the Parr family end up living in Syndrome's old house? I mean, pfft. 
I love it. And there you go, Ben. That's every reason I have to believe that the Pars are now living in Syndrome's house. My question for you and everyone else is, what do you think? Did the house once belong to him? Let me know in the towel section down below. And a special thanks to these patrons who support Super Carlin Brothers on Patreon. Hey! I know you, I recognize you from the Discord. Ooh, you're looking good. Did you get a new font size? Wow. If you'd like to support us and see your name here on this list and have access to other special perks like bloopers and the show after the show, make sure you check out patreon.com slash supercarlinbrothers. Hey, remember when we totally called that Nagini thing? Well, we've decided to commemorate it on a shirt, which is available through the end of the week. It is a limited time offer. This is the only time you can get it. It is available now at supercarlinbrothers.store. Guys, thanks so much as always always for watching please remember to like the video if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future pixar action from us if you want to see how incredibles 2 fits into the pixar theory you can check out this video right here and if you want to see all of jack jack's powers explained you can check out this video right here but ben that's all i've got for you today man i will see you in another life brother